It is week 10 of the college football season. We are back with our 10 best picks this weekend. My name is Austin, joined by Logan, and today each of us have our five favorite picks for college football Saturday. Logan, let's hop into a recap from last week, and I wish we could avoid this uh, record as you went one and four, the fans went one and four, I went two and three, suffered a brutal beat on my best bit of the week. That just seems to be the nature, but we're going to keep diving in. Actually, next week's video will be live on Tuesday for college football, so definitely stay, stay tuned for that. If you're new, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button too. It's college football week 10. Let's get into it. And Logan, I'm going to start this one off and I'm going to the biggest game of them all. I mean, the biggest game that everyone's going to be wanting to watch at 3.30 p.m. Saturday, Eastern time, Georgia versus Tennessee. And I'm taking the under 66 and a half points, minus one of five on DraftKings. Now, immediately people look at a Tennessee game and boom, hammer the over. And I understand Josh Heupel and his offense are going to run and they're going to run fast. But, and then people want this to be that Tennessee-Alabama game where we saw almost 100 points combined scored. But then you look at the teams, Tennessee averaging nearly 50 points per game, Georgia 41.8. Why is this line sitting at 66 and a half? And I think it comes down to Georgia trying to control the tempo of this game. They're 105th in pace of play. They want to slow down this game. If they get into a shootout against Tennessee, that's their, I don't know if they have a good chance of winning this one, but if they can slow it down, run the ball, and just use their defense, they should be good in this one. We look at last year, Hendon Hooker, who's looking great, one of the Heisman front runners. He was he did not look good last year at, at Georgia playing against them. I think it was like a 41 to 17 final score, which would have gone under this line. And while Georgia lost a lot of players to the NFL, they retooled and reloaded. They're still allowing only 10 and a half points per game. One of the best defenses in the country. And Georgia also has a little bit of motivation as the first college football playoff rankings come out and they were dropped from the one slot to the third slot. I think they're going to play into that. I think they're going to show up on Saturday. I'm not necessarily saying the Georgia Bulldogs cover this one, but I think this game goes under 66 and a half points. That's my first pick of the weekend. Logan, what you got? Yeah, I, I love that for, pick for you. I, I really think that's Georgia's blueprint to, to win and cover in that one. They have to slow it down. But in my one, I'm going to the battle in, in the state of Florida. And we're going to Miami versus Florida State. And I'm taking the Hurricanes plus seven and a half in this one. Look, at the end of the day, I, I just think this is way too many points in a rivalry spot for Miami. They're going to come out and, and be fired up versus their ACC and in-state rival Seminoles, right? Miami's offense last week, they had a, they had a week to forget against UVA. They, they looked absolutely atrocious. Now, in this one, Van Dyke, their quarterback, is questionable to, to play. I would absolutely love for him to play. And honestly, this line kind of looks like he might play, right? That's seven and a half. Maybe it, it changes if he's announced in or out. But at the end of the day, I think the Hurricanes are def definitely going to be fired up because as bad as they looked uh, offensively recently, Miami is still 12th in passing yards per game. This is an offense that, that can definitely move the ball up and down the field. And we know how, how this Florida State defense operates. They've given up a lot of chunk yardage plays. I saw how they got absolutely cooked by Wake Forest. I think Miami could follow some, some blueprint like that. Miami's defense, though, that's going to be the key to the game. And that's going to be, to me, what keeps them in this game and keeps the spread under the seven that we needed uh, for it to cash to be within a touchdown. This this game comes down to strength on strength. What do I mean by that? The Florida State offense, 22nd in rushing yards per game. Miami's defense, 22nd in rushing yards allowed per game. So something's got to give. I think I think Miami, you know, in, in this one, is, is just going to take the clock, chew it, and hopefully keep this within a one-score game. Look, they don't want to get in a shootout with, with Florida State, especially if for some reason Van Dyke is unable to go. They're definitely not going to want to get into a, a, a shootout with Florida State. So I think running the ball, two o'clock, that's going to be the, the key for the Hurricanes to, to cover in this one. Yeah, and the fact that you're getting that half point on the seven, I think, is a, is a very must-have. If you got if the line does go down to six and a half, you know that a lot of games can end on that seven low. But I like it. Both two teams, a lot of those players probably recruited by the same coaching staffs and whatnot. So they're going to play passionate. Now, let's go into, and I'm going to start with my second pick, and I'm actually going back to the SEC. Another big-time showdown is Alabama takes on LSU. And the Crimson Tide cast for me last week, so you best believe I'm running them back. Taking Alabama, minus 13 and a half. Currently minus 110 on FanDuel. And while a lot of people are going to be watching that Tennessee-Georgia game, this game is still another top 10 matchup. As you know, you see the 6th ranked Crimson Tide take on the 10th ranked LSU. And I think LSU soared up the rankings, and I don't think they really deserve to be there. This is a team that obviously won last week, but I don't trust Brian Kelly at all. We've seen in these big-time games, especially against Alabama when he was at Notre Dame, he just struggled. And I just don't see them getting it done. Bama has beaten LSU by two plus touchdowns in three of the last five games. The only one that really, you know, they saw the LSU win was the game with Joe Burrow. And obviously that, that was one of the most historic LSU Tigers team we've ever seen. At the quarterback for him, Jaden Daniels, he's been very good for him, but they're asking him to do everything. He's obviously throwing the ball a ton. And he's leading the team in rushes, averaging like 15 rushing attempts per game. 
I think if you stop him, which uh, Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide defense will know, hey, we got to key in on Jaden Daniels. You'll be fine stopping this LSU Tigers offense. And ultimately, I think the Crimson Tide put a stop, put a stop to it on the road. They continue to roll through the Tigers. They need to obviously make statement wins the rest of the season long. And they control their own destiny. And I just don't think this Tigers team is as good as the 10th ranked team in the nation. I think they put them up to 10th just to make this game look like a top 10 showdown. I don't think that's what it shows on Saturday. So give me the Crimson Tide by two plus touchdowns. I think they roll over the Tigers. So that's my second pick. Logan, what you got? We're sticking in the SEC for mine. It's not as big of a matchup at, at all, though. I can't lie to you here. We're going to the Vanderbilt Commodores, and I'm taking them plus seven against South Carolina. Now, this one did start with a line read, right? You have to look at this. And anytime I see Vanderbilt, the Commodores, laying a low number against an SEC opponent, it gets my attention, right? Because, you know, Vanderbilt's like the punching bag of the SEC, right? They're the, they're the team, if you're your SEC fan, you want to see Vanderbilt on your schedule, right? You got a 5-3 and three South Carolina team that's 4-1 and one straight up in their last five games. So they've been relatively hot, right? This South Carolina team has been, you know, much improved, but a lot better than I initially thought. But you know what? Vanderbilt is on a hot four-game losing streak. They played Missouri tough, only losing by three as two touchdown under underdogs. And I think they're going to uh, play South Carolina really tough in this one, too. I, I don't think they're just going to roll over for South Carolina. And that, I, I see this one be maybe being a field goal type game. I don't think I think Vanderbilt's getting way too many points at the seven. And honestly, when, when if you're spread reading Vanderbilt ever, normally they're like 28 point favorites. Just the books are pretty you know sure that they're going to get cooked, right? South Carolina has the edge statistically, but just the line just doesn't reflect it. Like if you go down and you look at each team's yards and and offensive you know rankings. Vanderbilt just gets smoked and they're like a hundred and or 90th in a lot of these categories, but you know what them not being a, a two score underdog or plus is, is a big, you know, statement for me in this one. I think the books are trying to tell us something in this one is, and that's going to be to take Vanderbilt with the points. I think, I think they play South Carolina sneaky close in that one. Hey, I hope Vandy does. I think the only time you took them this year was in week one. I think they cashed out for you. So let's move on Logan. It's the best bit of the, of the week. And, I think we both could agree we, we'd like to skip this segment as we've both been struggling both of ours lost last week i had the under in that ohio state penn state game i swear the live bet was like 40 and a half and then they combined for a 900 points in the fourth quarter losing and you know what i'll lead it off since my best bet is ice cold i need something to light a fire heat it up and i'm going with the liberty flames plus 14 and a half as they take on arkansas now look I'm placing the Razorbacks on upset alert on Saturday because this is the game that I think Liberty could win outright. Liberty enters 7-1. and one. They've won five straight games, including a big win last weekend, a blowout against BYU. Now, I don't think BYU is the best uh, team in the, in the NCAAs. More on that in a little bit. But this Arkansas Razorback team loves to overlook teams. You saw them earlier this season. They played a team in Missouri State that's like 3-5 and five on the year, only beat them by 11 points at home. This Razorbacks team doesn't play defense. They're giving up 31.9 points per game, allowing 27 or more in four straight games. Games. And Arkansas, if they look on their schedule, they see, ah, oh, Liberty, what the heck? And then they look at, oh, LSU and Ole Miss coming to Lafayette, uh, Fayetteville in the next two weeks? Yeah, sure. Screw Liberty Flames. We don't need to worry about them. Worry about that Sun Belt team. Look, I think this is a game where we see the Razorbacks struggle or maybe, maybe win this game by 14 or less. I just don't see the Arkansas Razorbacks beating the Flames by three or more possessions. I think they've covered this 14 and a half points. It's a lot to lay if it's a close game. It should be a no sweat bet for Liberty, and I think they have a chance to win this game outright. So I know it's a dart throw. Liberty Flames plus 14 and a half. Give it to me. Yeah, I, I like it. Go, go Liberty in that one. Austin, for my best bet this week, I'm going back to the scene of the crime. What do I mean by that? Sorry, guys. I sold straight up bad information picking Kentucky last week. So you know what? I'm going to pick against them this week for my best bet. I'm taking Missouri on the money line against Kentucky. Plus 100 odds. Sure, give it to me in a virtual pick them. Missouri, if you've been looking at their game logs, they've been in so many close games. Four out of the last five SEC games for Missouri have been within one score. They did win their last two of those games, so they've shown the ability to be tested and to and to get into close games. They played teams like Florida and, and Georgia pretty close, in, and, and I, I really do think this Missouri team can give Kentucky a lot of fits. If you look at Kentucky, they've lost three out of their last four SEC games, including that embarrassment against Tennessee that made me look like I didn't even know what I was talking about. They didn't belong in the same field as Tennessee last week. 
And yes, I that that really just does stick in my mind because Kentucky's ninth in scoring defense, but last week their their defense was just exposed in every way. Like the the blueprint is out there, Missouri. If you want to know how to how to beat that defense, I know they're not as talented as Tennessee offensively, but they should still be able to move the ball up and down the field, right? Missouri needs to establish the run on that Kentucky defense because Tennessee got whatever they wanted, however they wanted it, right? Kentucky offense one dimensional and the o-line is not playing good enough for for them to be playing that way right kentucky is 109th in rushing yards per game that's why we saw tennessee defense last week pin their ears back and tee off on will levis it was a terrible sight to see in that one and i and i just i really saw danger signs because i'm like kentucky's not the conventional drop back you know air it out team they're a, a ground and pound you know two clock type team and watching them turn into a drop back team like that no, no, not not good i think missouri wins and, and sends this kentucky team spiral once again yeah, that's a spicy best bet, Logan, but I do like it. Missouri's been so close in so many games. They eventually got to break through. Now, before I get into my fourth pick, I do want to make a note. I said Liberty was in the, in the Sun Belt. They're an independent. I have a Sun Belt team coming as my fifth pick, so stay tuned for that. Get excited. Now, let's talk about my fourth pick. I'm going to Boise State, taking a minus eight versus BYU. This is minus 110 across the books. And look, the Cougars, the BYU Cougars, that is, started the season hot. They were looking pretty good. They were ranked, winning four of their five games, including some big-time wins. I believe they beat Baylor. And then they've lost four in a row and they've not looked good and now they got to travel to the blue turf out in boise idaho and look the boise state broncos are rolling they've won six of their last seven are four and oh at home and at home they won their games by 39 20 22 and 23 points boise state beat byu by nine last year and i expect an even better showing out of them on saturday the boise state defense is where this comes down to because they're second in total yards allowed third in passing yards allowed and only now allowing 17.4 points per game the byu defense or byu defense on the other side just really stunk it up allowing over 428 yards per game including 200 on the ground expect george halani the boise state running back to have a field day against this byu cougars defense i think this is a no sweat bet for boise state i think they can come out here, win this game at home by hopefully two plus touchdowns. That's what we need out of the Broncos. And I certainly think they're capable of getting it done. Unless BYU tries to get their season on track, I just don't see it happening on Saturday. Give me the Broncos minus the eight. Logan, yeah, go, go blue turf in that one, right? Now for mine, I, I'm going to, I'm going to some late action. You're on the East Coast. Stay up for this one. Grab a cup of coffee, right? Going to Fresno State versus Hawaii. I'm taking Fresno State minus 27 and a half points. This is, I think, the biggest spread I've taken all year, but Hawaii is just that bad for me to go the other way. It wouldn't be me taking Hawaii with the points. Got, can't lie to you there. Hawaii's offense, 119th in scoring offense, 109th in passing yards per game. They don't really do anything right, right? You know, if you've ever watched Hawaii, you, you can confirm that, right? Fresno State's defense, respectable, right? 54th in scoring defense. I don't need them to go be great. Just not good or just be good enough today against Hawaii. Hawaii's kept their last four games within two scores. You know, that's good for a Hawaii team that's that's not really all that great on paper. It's time for them to get blown out, you know, as evidenced by the line. Whenever a team's just been kind of covering or, or being competitive in their last few games, and then you just see a monstrous line like this. I think the books are kind of telling us, hey, you know, Fresno State has the capability to overwhelm them. And you look at Hawaii's defense, they're just as bad as their offense. 118th in scoring and 125th in yards per play allowed. So Hawaii's defense just doesn't doesn't really move the needle for me. And I think Fresno State's going to be able to get the quick strike touchdowns. And that's how you cover a four touchdown spread. I mean, you do have to play a really flawless brand of football to cover a 28 point spread. But I believe the, the odds makers, you know, have this one cut out for Fresno State. Yeah, and I think 28 points is doable. When you get into like the high 30s in college, it really is tough to cover mm -hmm. those lines. Now, Logan, before I hop into my fifth and final pick, I have a trivia question for you. And yeah. Which team has allowed the fewest rushing yards per game in college football this season? Hmm. Georgia? Uh, close. James Madison Dukes, and I'm taking them plus <laughs> seven and a half as they take on Louisville. Now, not only have they done the fewest rushing yards allowed this season, the fewest rushing yards per attempt. Now the Dukes are only hitting a touchdown in this one. So seven and a half points. Why? They've lost two in a row to Georgia Southern and Marshall by seven and 14 points. Now they're coming to play Louisville, a team that's actually looking pretty good. Won three straight, including a decisive win against ranked Wake Forest. Yeah, you look at uh, Louisville's schedule, oh, look who they have next week. They have Clemson. Wouldn't it be just right to overlook this Sun Belt team like James Madison coming into Cardinal Stadium? I think so. And I think this comes down to Louisville one, not the greatest defense. And I think JMU can stop the run. And JMU has a capable offense. They're averaging 38.7 points per game in the, in the in just this season. That's 14th in the nation. And their defense, like I said, is underrated, allowing just 54.9 rushing yards per game. The next closest is Illinois, 75.6. You ever watched Louisville? 
What do they like to do? They like to run the football with Malik Cunningham, and they rely heavily on the run, allowing uh, averaging almost 200 rushing yards per game. They only pass for about 215. So if JMU can come out here, stop the run, this might be the most formidable you know task or team they face that can run the football. But they can come out here and limit this uh, Louisville Cardinals offense to maybe some second and nines, third and longs, and make Malik Cunningham have to throw the ball to beat them. I certainly think they're perfectly capable. I think you're you're seeing the most only seven and a half point favorites when I think if if this line we're going to be like all right Louisville's going to murder them like they've been doing teens this would be like 14 and a half 11 and a half in fact we're only getting seven and a half i think the the dukes come out here i'm taking them i'm taking james madison plus seven and a half to wrap up the week now logan for your fifth and final pick normally you dump jump into the dumpster but <laughs> you got wrong real good last weekend i think you've learned your lesson uh betting on some buns football but i think you're, yeah. you're gonna get a winner here what you got to wrap up yeah the yeah, sorry, got to take a break from dumpster. You know, I, I get out of the trash every once in a while. But for my pick, staying in the late games, right? I'm going to Arizona State versus UCLA, and I'm taking Arizona State with the points. Plus 11 in this one is, is currently the, the line on it. Look, at the end of the day, I think this is just very spooky hours for UCLA. It's not Halloween is past, but 7-1 and one UCLA could be in some late night trouble on the road. I really do, do see this one coming. UCLA's offense, they look strong with the easy cover versus Stanford this week or last week. But this is an unforeseen speed bump. I, I just see it, you know, being in the Pac-12, these teams, I, I've said it a million times, they beat up on each other. You know, they they win games they probably shouldn't. This could be a one a, a game UCLA drops easily, and, and the line's kind of indicative of that. It's in that, that teeter, that scary 11-point range. Last week, I thought maybe they might struggle versus Stanford because, you know, everybody likes to go late chase in the Pac-12 action, Pac-12 after dark. And UCLA covered easily. I don't think it's going to happen that way this week. Arizona State... If it, they did lose outright to Stanford and, and the very square thinking and kind of honestly how you're wrong in college football is, is the misconception would be, oh, well, by the by the transitive property. Well, UCLA got to, it has to easily beat Arizona State because Arizona State lost to, to Stanford. No, that's not how necessarily how this works. You know, a lot of weird stuff happens. Arizona State's defense too, 61st in yards per play allowed. They're, if they're going to need to to cover this one, they're going to have to limit UCLA's explosive plays. Then they they definitely have the athletes on, on the defensive side of the ball to do it. I'm not asking them to go shut down UCLA completely, but just keep it right within striking distance. Keep this a 10 point game, seven point game, and I think we have a really good shot at covering this for the Sun Devils. Yeah, I, I love the pick, Logan. I love all five of your picks. Hopefully, we if we go 10 and 0. We're giving away some money uh, next week and next week's video. We appreciate. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, but as always, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. Next week's college football video, like I said, will be posted on Tuesday. Let us know your favorite picks down below. And then whatever the top five most liked comments, we will track towards the fans record next week. Appreciate you guys. Enjoy this Saturday video. We'll pop up a couple of other videos that might intrigue you. And Logan and Austin, we're signing out. Peace.